everyone, welcome to Volleyball Pro Mindset, where we analyze professional volleyball players and games and learn how to apply their techniques, work ethic, and mindset to our own lives. My name is Coach Donnie, and I study, train, and play volleyball for a living. In this video, we'll be studying Irvin Ingepet, who is one of the best outside hitters in the world and is a 2020 Tokyo Olympic gold medalist. He is a member of the French national team, is 31 years old, 6 foot 4 inches or 193 centimeters tall, and 212 pounds or 96 kilograms. Don't forget to check out my other videos from the Why Is This Player So Good series in the playlist linked below where I've analyzed other amazing players like Yuji Nishida and TJ DeFalco. Here are 5 reasons why Irvin Ingepet is such an amazing outside hitter. Ingepet is a very intelligent attacker, which means he sees the block well and has a wide variety of offensive options. He can spike sharp angle, line, seam, tool off the block, tool high off the block, tip, roll shot, deep corner, and many more. This makes him an incredibly difficult attacker to defend against because Irvin adapts so quickly to the block and defense and he rarely does the same thing twice. Ingepet is probably best known for being the most creative player. There are very few innovators of the game and Ingepet is constantly coming up with new techniques and ways to score. In fact, you'll eventually see other players adapt Irvin's techniques over time because they see how effective they are. Pet. Looks like he's going to have a swing, makes the set, gives a free swing out wide for Ishikawa. That made famous by Irvin Engapet of France. Irvin's creativity makes him very difficult to read because you simply don't know what he's going to do sometimes. On the outside, it looks like he's playing around, but there's a reason why his hitting efficiency is always very high. What's most impressive is that it takes a lot of confidence and risk to be a volleyball innovator which shows how strong his mind is. Irvin understands that at the highest level, you cannot achieve the big reward without taking big risks. Irvin is one of the most versatile players in the world. He can perform nearly every skill at a high level consistently, whether it's serving, passing, hitting on the right side, hitting from the back row, blocking, defense, and even setting. He executes each skill with great technique and calmness. Oftentimes, he doesn't even need a full approach when attacking, and he can immediately adapt to the set. There is even one play where Irvin got stuck in the middle, and instead of looking lost and panicking, he still finds a way to score as a middle. If you want to be an explosive athlete and jump like Irvin Engapet, then use my jump training programs to help you increase your vertical jump and take your volleyball athleticism to the next level. Use my discount code and link in the description box to get 5% off my jump training programs today. Engapet is hyper aggressive and never backs down from an opportunity to swing at the ball. Even if he's jumping backwards or off balance, if he sees an opportunity to take a big swing, he will do it. His aggression also applies to his blocking. Most players his size simply try to take away space or put their hands up hoping to slow the ball down. But Irvin, on the other hand, is looking to score a point from his block. And of course, he tries to constantly score with his aggressive serving and never holds back. The last and most important quality that Ingepet has is his ability to excel under pressure. Even though he's an undersized player at 6 foot 4 compared to the rest of the top players in the world, that does not deter him from taking over a game and wanting to finish the last point. There's a reason why he's won a European Championship, World League title, Volleyball Nations League title, French Cup Championship, Italian Super Cup title, and Olympic gold medal. This guy just finds a way to win wherever he's at. One of the most exciting pressure moments was watching Irvin serve on game point against Germany in Berlin 
to help France qualify for the Tokyo Olympics. Then of course, followed by an amazing MVP worthy performance versus Russia in a five set match to lead France to the gold medal victory. Good dig off a of transition and then quickly going, oh, the roundhouse. That used to be an old school technique in the 80s and 70s and 60s, but look at that. Now, why would he do a roundhouse? Let's analyze that. So it's a pretty fast set to the outside and the right front blocker is already camping there, number four from China. He's lined up perfectly along Engapet's right shoulder. So if he does swing, he's gonna go straight into the block. Looks like also he's slightly under the ball. So instead of just tipping it, he's a little bit under the ball, but he still tries to take a swing and he's going over his head. So this blocker is actually well lined up with Engapet, but going completely over his head across his body for a soft line hit. Signature Engapet. Oh, that was a hammer. What was that? Okay, that's nothing crazy. That's just a bounce ball. Let's see how he's able to just put so much power into it. I mean, it was bouncing way above the antenna. So what's unique about Ingepet too is he tends to do like a, a three or two step approach sometimes. So there we have a left, and then we have a big penultimate step right there. See how his arms are straight all the way back. Big second stride, torso's upright on his second step. Wide base. Ball's in front of his left shoulder. This is great spacing. You always want the ball just to be slightly in front of your head. Boom. And it's a cross body swing. So he's getting completely on top of that. Great rotation of his thoracic spine, which is the upper back here. And just whipping that, that arm back. And then that blocker from Korea looking at him thinking what the heck just happened. And one thing that he's doing so great here is his torso's upright. A lot of people think if I lean into the ball, I'm gonna get more power, but you actually have to stay upright in order for your body to rotate. But look at that, he just oh, he lets the ball drop in front just for that bounce ball. Look at that, man, that's a three meter ball right there. Love these replays. And see how his arm whips back. That's just how loose his body is. You wanna stay loose in order for you to be explosive. Good short pass. Oh, the pump back one. What the heck is going on with this guy? Okay, so I think that was unplanned. I think he adjusted to just what happened. I think this is China and they're trying to serve Ingepet short to take him out of his approach. So that's a good game plan. And look at that passing technique. When you're closer to the net, you actually want your platform to be almost parallel to the ground to pass it more up because if you have a traditional platform where you're pointing more downward, it's gonna go over. So good passing technique here. His feet holding a platform for a split second and it doesn't look like he's saying anything, but I think he's going in that first tempo approach where he's jumping like a middle quick set, but he sees that the ball is releasing out of Tony Uti's hands a little bit maybe slower or higher so he kind of does a hop and doesn't fully commit to it because he's reading all these signs from the setter. So he does like an accidental pump one and just does a standing jump and just crushes it. This is every setter's dream to have a hitter that can adjust to any type of set you give him. So you see how it's going a little bit higher and to the right than he's anticipating. So then he kind of just does a half jump, lands on the ground and then max jumps to fully get to the ball and he has a signature smile at the end because he knows he just did something crazy. Good hand pass, inside out approach. And that, that's probably the most traditional technique he's going to have right there. So they serve the seam in between Engapet and I think Kevin Tilly, who's the other outside. So they're trying to serve short again to Engapet to just disrupt the approach and also to interrupt the approach of the middle. So it's a good game plan from Australia. So hand pass from Ingepet. So you see how he's almost short all the way in the middle of the court. And that makes for a more difficult path to the left front because you have to go inside out and you have to go kind of a curved approach. But when you have great footwork like Ingepet, so immediately right, he does his approach straight to the target. We don't go like an L, like to the sideline and straight. You don't have time for that. So he goes right, 
left and every step is toward where he wants to get set. And then lastly, the last two steps is a big step close, right, left, all the way to zone four. Easy put away because the blockers are probably cheating in thinking that he's not gonna get set because he just passed all the way in the middle. So the right front's cheating in and then that creates a little bit more line for him to hit. So you see how he's not smiling after that one. That one wasn't tricky enough. That's too boring for him. Is he gonna set it back real quick? Yep, his ability to just hit from the back row. And once again, he's not smiling. This is, this is too normal and too boring for him. Now let's look at his broad jump technique because broad jumping is a whole different skill in itself here. A lot of times he just takes a three or a two step approach. It's pretty simple, left, still big penultimate step, right, left, and he's still upright. A lot of people make the mistake that they lean forward thinking that's gonna help them broad jump. But broad jumping is really about delaying that last step or letting your knees go forward a slightly to help you jump forward but still up. But you see how his torso is still upright and that allows him to generate a lot of torque I and mean, you can try this yourself. If you try to lean and then turn, it's very uncomfortable for your spine. That's not how your body works. Sees the open court and it just torques across his body there. Big step close, upright torso, and right in that seam. See how he's hitting in between the right and left blockers. He doesn't just hit straight, he sees the defenders and he sees this little gap in between these two players here. He doesn't even have to hit that hard. Great technique too, arm all the way back, simple arm swing. Oh, look at that. And of course, he's gonna put the ball away out of system because he's Anga Pet. Holy cow, let's watch that scene again. What was that? What the heck just happened? Okay, so the left-handed opposite from Australia. His name is Paul Carroll. I only know his name because he was the opposite hitter for the Pepperdine University men's volleyball team, a really great team here. And he hits hard, like Paul Carroll hits the crap out of the ball. So we have a double block. Now left-handed hitter, most of the time they're gonna try to turn it back into the angle. So Engapet, you see how his feet are stopped before Paul Carroll contacts the ball? and he reads it really well, he's very still. And you see how little movement his body makes. Let's watch that again. A lot of defenders think excess movement, a little too flashy, but such simple movements. Body behind the ball, platform up, and he's loaded to hit. Look at this here, left. Okay, so he does a four step approach there. So he goes right, left, and so his first two steps are toward where he wants to get set, and his last two steps he makes a huge adjustment with that second step into a huge cut at the ball against a triple block, and that is not a small block from Australia. Here we can see his footwork. Oh, that's a pretty bad out of system set, but he just hits through it there. So he's patiently waiting where he usually loads, which is near the left sideline, because ideally they want to set him closer to zone four here. So you see how his first two steps are where he goes in case the ball goes is a good set, but it ends up being a really inside set. So he adjusts on his last two steps, big step close, sees the seam in the block and just crushes it. Now the libero reads it, but that's just too much heat on that one. The Australian block needs to do a better job going shoulder to shoulder. And he's probably thinking, what the heck guys? <laughs> Gotta close the block. There we go, you see his fingers going up. All right, he's playing right front right now. Gets a good pass, swings out, ooh, cross body. One thing that Engapet's really great at doing is transitioning from passing into hitting. A lot of people struggle to do both of those skills in rhythm at the same time here. So he shuffles in rhythm and then he takes his full three-step approach, faces the baseline and then goes across his body against a single block, no rotation, just all arm speed there. And that's one thing that Engapet has is an incredibly fast arm. Now that you've learned five reasons why Irving Ingepet is one of the best outside hitters in the world, let me know your thoughts about his skill level in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting this channel by dropping a super thanks comment below or by joining my Patreon where you receive access to exclusive content like early access to my videos, live Q&A sessions, behind the scenes footage, and more.